Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. Quick info before we begin, today's video has two stories and both of them have updates. Now let's get started with the first one. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user throwaway 610 2016 My 18 female dad, 54 male, wants to co-sign on all my bank accounts against my wishes. I'm an 18 year old college student who just finished my first year attending school out of state. I have an account at a hometown credit union and my dad is a co-signer on that account. I got a part-time job while at school, which made me realize that I would like a more convenient bank rather than relying on a credit union in another state. I mentioned this to my dad, who would like to co-sign on the new account. I am not okay with this, I am a legal adult seeking more financial independence and I don't think the reasons he provided for co-signing are valid. When I changed my credit union account from a teen account to an adult account after my birthday, my parents, especially my dad, insisted that he co-sign on the account. His reason for this was that he still is helping me pay for things like textbooks and wanted to make sure he could quickly deposit money into my credit union account, which he only did once over the school year. At the time, I was pretty uncomfortable with him co-signing on my credit union account, but I was, and am, relatively new to managing my finances and believed at the time that co-signing was the best course of action, considering that I was leaving for school soon and I didn't have time to waste in a family argument. After some research, I realized that what he told me about co-signing and making deposits earlier was not really true. Anyone can directly deposit money into my account. The only things he can do as a co-signer that he wouldn't otherwise be able to do are withdraw money from my account, view my transaction history, and share responsibility in case either of us is in a financial mess. I do not want him to be doing any of those things. So obviously, the best course for me is to open an account under only my name and use that for most of my financial interactions. However, I really don't want his name linked to me financially at all and his insistence on co-signing on a new account makes me want to close my old credit union account completely. I am worried about the backlash from suggesting that I am not entirely financially independent and I am living with my parents over winter and summer breaks from school. My dad is somewhat unemployed, he works for himself in the private sector and does not work full time. He used to make a much higher income and my parents supplemented my mom's and his small income with money withdrawn from retirement accounts. This can't continue indefinitely and at some point the money will run out. I really don't want to be financially responsible when that happens. There are also significant privacy concerns. My parents are strict and very religious and homeschooled me for religious reasons and were accustomed to controlling almost every aspect of my life as a child and a teenager. My dad has told me about the shared credit union account. I can see all of your transactions on my Mint app, but I have no reason to snoop unless you give me one. And if I see something I don't like, it's something we should be talking about anyway. So which is it? Is he not looking or is he looking and not finding fault with my purchases? I also dislike the I have no reasons to snoop unless you give me one attitude. As if my right to privacy disappears once he disapproves of some aspect of my life. I have large chunks of information about my personal life that I must keep private for my own safety right now. And his access to my financial information jeopardizes that safety. All in all, the untruthful reasons he has provided, the financial instability of my parents and the privacy concerns are huge red flags for me. I will refuse to co-sign another bank account with my dad even under family pressures or threats. But I need to find a way to dismantle the credit union account and start a private account without upsetting the family so much that I am cut off or kicked out. How can I deal with this attempt to control more of my life and how can I suggest to my dad that I should have my own accounts without bringing up these more volatile concerns? Well OP, I would say there's not much to analyze here because you apparently have everything really clear. You want to get rid of that old credit union account, you don't want your dad in your business and you want to live your own life. Which you kind of already are doing considering you're going to school and you're just staying with your parents two times out of the year. So maybe you should capitalize on that. And on that point, here's what I would do if I were you. The first thing I would do because I don't know the number is look into your credit union account and see how much money your dad deposits into that account a year. 
And if by working your part-time job or jobs if you want to, and you are able to cover what your dad was giving you, then you are financially independent. And you should just open an account in a bank that you choose in the city where you live and have all your money go in there. Then I would go to the credit union account and see if you can remove your name voluntarily. Like go to the bank and say, you know what? I don't have an account anymore in this bank. This is a joint account with my dad that I'm not gonna use anymore. And I'd like my name removed from it. I really don't know the rules on this one, so I might be talking out of my butt. And then if your dad confronts you, if you don't want to hurt his feelings by telling him that you just don't trust him, you could say, you know what, dad, I appreciate all the effort that you're doing for me, but I'm an adult, I should be carrying my own weight, and I have a part-time job, and I can cover the money that you were giving me, so now you don't have to give me any more money. That way, you shut him down, because now he can't complain that, hey, I'm giving you money, so I should have visibility. No, you don't anymore. And what do you guys think about this situation? What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Defiancy says, truth be told at 18, it's time to assert your independence in this way. I will say that there is a middle ground here. Open up a new account and have all your paychecks, etc. direct deposited there. This will be your primary account. The other account that your father has access to, keep that one to placate him. If his reasoning is, it makes it easier to deposit money, well, tell him he can deposit it there. But you are right, there is basically no reason for him to co-sign on any account with you, and I suspect he is using it to maintain some semblance of control over you. And OP responds, I already gave him the suggestion about simply depositing money in the existing credit union account. He still wanted to co-sign on my new account, which is a huge warning sign to me. His one crappy reason doesn't even apply to the potential new account. Also, about the controlling thing, it's not just me. He has been a co-signer on my older 20 female sister's account since she turned 18. But she seems to be okay with this. She doesn't work as much as I do, so I think it hasn't crossed her mind. We are hosting an exchange student who is a minor and he insisted on co-signing on her bank account even when the international student director at her school recommended against it because sharing financial responsibility between citizens of two countries is generally a bad plan. He claims that it would be a problem in parents less trustworthy than him. But I believe that everyone untrustworthy started out being perceived as trustworthy until they first broke that trust. So why should I give him or anyone else that opportunity? KM89 says, just go open an account by yourself for yourself. You don't need your father's permission to do that. However, if you are at all financially dependent on your father, doing so might cause him to cut you off. Just an FYI. And OP responds, yeah, I'm walking on eggshells here. I know that being cut off is a small possibility, which I can't risk for at least a few months when I am living away from home again. My summer work in this state pays well, but is rather unpredictable in schedule, so it's hard to rely on that. RSGEM79 says, I think you should absolutely have your own account for your money, but understand that your father may be less inclined to give you money if you can easily withdraw it from one account and move it to yours. Also, who is paying for you to attend college? And OP responds, I have a college savings fund which was started by my grandparents and contributed to by my parents, so it is my parents who are paying in that sense. But since it's a 529, I could handle the payments myself from that since it's in my name only if my parents cut me off. That is how I'm paying for tuition, housing, and dining hall food. They already don't pay for that much of my stuff. The only thing I couldn't afford on my own is my phone plan, and I could easily choose a smaller plan. Opie's edit. Thanks for all the input everyone. This situation is a little worse than I thought when posting this. Seeing things from others' perspectives is rather eye-opening. The best thing would be to go back in time and never have told him in the first place what I was thinking about financially, but even as problematic as his actions are, he's still my dad. And I'm still learning that there are many conversations I shouldn't have with my parents, even when I want advice from an adult I'm close to, simply because there isn't much trust on either side of our relationship. I don't think he's opening credit lines or anything like that, but I think this is a power or control thing for him. He sees himself as the divinely mandated head of the household and despite his recent rhetoric on learning to parent adult children, I'm pretty sure he still sees all of us as his baby girls. That being said, my intended career pays very well and my mom has alluded to me paying for things in the family like vacations when I get rich. 
Obviously, I want all financial ties dissolved well before I begin my career. The first course of action I will take is to open an account by myself at the bank he knows I am interested in. I will tell him about this one, so I can get the card in the mail. Did I mention that mail is always looked at by family? But at a time when he can't react poorly, like when there are other people around. Then, once at my school, I can open an emergency, completely secret account at a bank he doesn't know about which my RA recommends. I guess he will be pretty displeased that he isn't a co-owner of my account, but I will give him the opportunity to act rationally about it. I expect that he will tighten control in other areas as a response, once he realizes that I know that his financial arguments in favor of co-signing don't hold up. There are plenty of things I could do if we were financially independent and willing to sacrifice family relationships. But I am neither of those things. The proper balance is to be assertive but not totally secretive. And if that goes very poorly, then it's time to be secretive. I want to give my dad a chance to respond like an adult, but I am not giving him the chance to treat me like a child. Oh wow, OP. I mean, it seems like you have everything under control and you have a clear view of what you want to do, but I have to say, that thing about the exchange student and your dad also forcing himself into that account, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I am uncomfortable with that. That was just weird. In any case, it sounds like OP really has things pretty clear and she has a plan about what she wants to do. So let's move on to the update to see how it went for OP, but of course before that, here's another one of my playlists for you to enjoy after the video. Now let's move on with the update. Thanks greatly to everyone's advice, I managed to open up a new account of my own and have begun transferring money into it slowly. I opened it while out running other errands by myself and I timed it so that I would arrive home just a few minutes before dinner was served so that it wouldn't get too crazy if my parents reacted poorly. I did not ask permission to open the account before leaving, I simply went and did it, and then informed my parents when I was home that I had a new account, that could be checked off the to-do list and that I was expecting a card in the mail. There's only one bank that is conveniently located in both my hometown and my school town, so my parents know that I chose the bank my dad recommended, but either way, he could tell from the mail. I read all of the fine print of my paperwork and unless the bank does some illegal things, I am the only person who is authorized to access the money in my new account. Transferring money into the account is quite simple though. Winky face. I made sure to mention this in the discussion when I got home, but my strategic timing was effective and there was some griping about the solo account from both parents, which was lessened when dinner needed to be put on the table. I have been intentionally vague about discussing details about my new banking setup with my family or anyone else for that matter. I set up online statements to an email address that my parents have no access to, so there's no paper trail for my account, other than the welcome information and actual card. My card, <clears throat> my card arrived in the mail and my card arrived in the mail and every communication from the bank is stored in my bedroom away from prying eyes. There has been less fallout than I expected. My old account is still under my name and my dad's, but I think I'm okay with that for now as long as I pay close attention. So be it if it appeases him from asking questions about my new account's information. I have mentally assigned it an end date of my graduation. I think it also helped that there were some significant family issues that came up shortly after I opened the account on my own, so my decision didn't bear the brunt of the family judgment. I've decided to gradually claim my own financial independence. I'm reading about personal finances and I've already learned a lot. I still have so much more to learn and I think that the less I involve my parents, the better I will feel. My dad might have some good advice now and then, but I can't evaluate it unless I know what other people are saying about the same issues. Money is no exception. The message I got from the comments on my original post was, if you want to be treated like an adult, act like one. I have also started to apply this philosophy to other non-financial areas. For example, rather than asking for permission to go somewhere, I just tell my parents that I am going out and where I will be. It's subtle, but I think eventually these changes will have the desired effect. I have noticed the difference between my behavior and my older sisters. The less I allow my parents to pressure me into decisions simply because they are my parents, the happier I will be as an independent and hopefully informed adult. 
Thanks again for all your help. I think I mainly needed other people to see the same red flags that I did and tell me that it was okay to act independently in this situation. I have no idea how my parents will ultimately respond to my increased financial freedom, but you know what? I think I can handle it. Well, Opie, I'm gonna call this a happy update. You seem to be on the right path toward, like you say, being an informed and independent adult, so good for you. The community was right. If you want to be treated like an adult, you have to act like one. And that means, of course, you have all the benefits of being an adult, but that, of course, comes with responsibility, and it sounds like you're able to handle both. So here's wishing you, Opie, all the best in the future. Take care, and thank you for sharing. Now, let's move on to the next post that, like I said in the beginning, also has an update. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Deleted. My 22 male mom, 60 female and sister, 36 female, are mad at me for correctly filing my taxes. Up until last year, I was in college and working part-time. I was filed as a dependent under my sister. My mom collects social security. After getting out of school, I got a full-time job and make well above the cutoff for filing as an independent. My sister pointed me as a dependent and didn't tell me. I found out when I tried to file my taxes and it got kicked back saying someone had filed me under them. I legally cannot file as a dependent with the amount I make, but there is a form you can fill out to resubmit taxes. I told her to fill that out and send it in and she told me no because if she refiles, she'll have to pay back the two grand she got for filing me under her. If she doesn't fill out this form to correct the issue, she may get audited and since she filed our mom under her, my mom will lose her social security for my adopted brother. I feel it's important to point out that they have their taxes set up to get the most money back and cheat the system. They have a history of cheating people, faking a will, taking the family to the deceased to court to get possession of the property, etc. I have been wondering for years, my mom left when I was 9, if this is a connection that is even worth having. Now my issue. I submitted the form to get the IRS to look into my taxes so I could file by myself and get taken off of my sisters. They're mad at me, saying they don't want me in their lives and how could you do this after everything we've done for you? My only other option was tax evasion and jail. Another point is that my mom is very narcissistic and self-centered. She acts like a four-year-old and is very manipulative. My sister is the same way. There's always a guilt trip and anything they do for you is held against you. My real question here is, is the relationship with my mom and sister worth keeping? Well, OP, at face value, I would say F no. You need to cut contact with those people. They are not good news. They're crooks. Let's face it, they're crooks. Honestly, I would check if your name or your social security number is being used in anything because if they're con artists, well, you're an easy target. So I would not only continue to do what you're doing with the IRS, but if the IRS asks for any information regarding your mom and sister, I would give it to them. Of course, I don't know the whole story, but the whole thing about them cheating somebody out of the property with faking a will and all that, yeah, they're really crappy people. And of course, OP, nobody would blame you if you decide to go no contact. And what do you guys think about this situation? What would you do if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Angelo Papa says, this is tax fraud. Do not get caught up in it. If it means reporting your sister or mother to the authorities, then so be it. Don't risk ruining your life so she can get two extra grand. File your own taxes honestly and separate yourself from them as quickly as possible. Also, ensure they have no access to your bank accounts, legal documents, etc. It may mean changing things around, but you need to do this. It's not even an option. Speak with your banker, your tax agent, employer, or anyone else you have to. You have to become an adult quickly here. It's not the easiest thing to do, but there is a lot of help out there. Check with the folks over at Personal Finance. They can provide some great advice on how to protect yourself. Lifelong Noob says, quote, Is the relationship with my mom and sister worth keeping? End quote. Nope. Freedom! Sorry you had to put up with that BS for so long, but really, you're better off without people like that. LM Grade 13 says, This is ridiculous. You deserve your own refund that you earned. Unless your sister is footing your bills, you are not her dependent. This could cause many other issues, like if you decide to go back to school and apply for financial aid, etc. 
I think you continue to point out that you are abiding by the law and are entitled to the refund you earned from working and supporting yourself, that your sister is doing something illegal and did in fact overcollect $2,000 for lying to the government. You are simply doing the right thing and trying to avoid your sister getting into a lot of trouble for breaking the law. Opie's edit. I wanted to thank all of you for your responses. You have all really opened my eyes to what's been happening. Someone linked race by narcissists and it showed me how truly effed up they are as family. A lot of you are telling me to get away from them. I just moved 600 miles away back to my home state, accepted a job two weeks in and got a house with my best friend. I left partly to get back here and partly to get away from them. But until now, cutting them off didn't seem reasonable. As far as the taxes go, I have already done everything I need to correct this, and I gave them ample time to do so. If they don't want to take care of it themselves, the IRS will catch up with them. I'm sure this isn't the end of it, and I plan to post an update later. Again, thank you for all of your help. Alright, well the community definitely opened OP's eyes and he already started doing something, so let's move on to the update to see how it all worked out. Good morning r slash relationships. So my last post got much more traction than I thought it would. I want to thank everyone for the replies and let you all know that your advice was beneficial to me. I have already submitted all the paperwork I need to make sure my taxes are filed correctly and I won't be penalized for anything my mom and sister did. I sent them a link for the form they would need to fill out to do the same. If they decide not to do it, it's on them. At this point, I live 600 miles away from them with my best friend. I moved back to my home state two weeks ago. They have no control over my finances. However, many of you suggested I freeze my credit and I am looking into that today. Some of the replies I got pulled some memories out of me regarding how they treated me personally and how much they respected me. It really opened my eyes to how effed up the situation really was. It was also mentioned never to let my future wife meet them and that's already the plan. They've ruined my relationships in the past and tried to poison my and my dad's relationship. I don't want them in my life. I want to go no contact, but I know they'll find a way to communicate and try to make me feel bad about trying to better my life. Crap, when I moved back up here, my mom told me I was making a mistake and ruining my life. By accepting a job offer? Really? Misery loves company, but they won't have mine anymore. It's been a few days and it's been quiet, which should be comforting, but it's not. They aren't the people to be silent unless something is being planned. I see my aunts and uncles posting on Facebook talking about leaving young people alone, what's the point of torturing a young person? They haven't said names, but my mom loves to call our family and talk about how crappy I am when I don't go along with her manipulative BS. It seems they're finally seeing through her, so I'm gonna keep an eye on all of this and see what happens. Aside from freezing my credit, there isn't much I can do. Again, thank you to everyone who replied for opening my eyes. Well, Opie, good job on doing what you're doing. You're away from them, you froze your credit, which as you say is what you can do. Now, regarding the no contact, I would say that whenever they call you, you just hang up. You don't even let them finish the hello. And if you're getting a call from a number that you don't know who it is, don't pick it up. Unless it's some sort of a parcel or something related to a new job or something like that. But otherwise, do not pick up. And on that note, Opie, I'm going to wish you all the very best in the future. Hopefully your mom and sister will leave you alone or even better, they'll get caught. Take care, Opie, and thank you for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.